Over the last four weeks, today being the fifth week, we have been exploring what we do when God is silent, when he appears distant, when we're going through struggles in life and we're just not quite sure where God is at in the midst of those struggles and in the midst of that silence. And we've talked about how it's important for us to be honest and open with God about uh, the importance of expressing our feelings, our honest feelings about where we are at and what we are going through. To be honest with ourselves and to be honest with God. The Psalms show us time and time and time again about the importance of just being open with God about what we are going through, how we're feeling, what we are experiencing. And then next we looked at how we aren't alone in the midst of those moments where it feels like we're in the valley of the shadow of, of death. We, we certainly have one another. We certainly have each other to, to bear one another's burdens. And it's awesome to be able to, have, to lean on one another, to have shoulders to cry on. But we also have Jesus who went through unspeakable pain and suffering, who understands our pain and our suffering, who understands what it is to struggle and even feeling like, or understanding that feeling of feeling like God has forsaken him. And that God in Jesus Christ is with us in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. We are by no means alone in the midst of our struggles. And then we talked about the importance of determining whether or not we trust and believe that God is in fact good and wise and loving. It's a hard question to sometimes grapple with because sometimes it doesn't feel like He is. But we talked about the importance of committing to asking that question when we find ourselves in the midst of, of struggle. And then last week we talked about the importance of of lamenting, holding together the tension of both the anguish and the hope in Jesus Christ that we have. Holding together and expressing the pain that we might be experiencing, but also understanding that we have hope to come. That our suffering is not eternal, but is only temporary. And so we learned about the need for us to lament when we find ourselves struggling. Again, crying out to God, asking for His intervention, but also understanding and proclaiming His goodness. And today, we're going to explore the beauty that can come to us in the midst of that silence, in the midst of the, the brokenness that we might be going through in life. I'm going to probably butcher this word. But in Japanese culture, there's a type of art that's called kintsugi. And basically, what they do is they take shattered or broken things and they mend them together with precious metals. More often than not, they tend to use gold and they create something beautiful out of what is broken. In fact, you can see an example of this up here. Hopefully it's relatively clear. You can see the cracks that are, are filled in with the gold because they understand, those artists understand that just because something is broken doesn't mean that it doesn't have value or that it's useless. It can be rebuilt, remade, transformed into something new. Pete Grieg says that our deepest suffering be can become our greatest gift to the world. And I think when I heard that, I'm like, how, how is that possible? How can suffering be a gift to us? And in order to, I think, through, think through some of that this morning, I'd like for us to take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 
verses 3 through 5. Again, if you have your Bibles or Bible apps, I'd invite you to turn with me to read those along with me. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Now, I use this passage a lot whenever I perform a funeral, because I think in a lot of ways it serves to remind us of the importance of our investment in one another. We gather together and go to funerals as community because there's a shared comforting, a shared encouragement that can happen when we're together in the same place at the same time. And what we oftentimes think when we're going through suffering is that we have to go it alone. We have to do it all by ourselves. We have to figure it out. We have to sort of pull ourselves up by our bootstraps in the midst of that suffering and take care of it all by ourselves. But God tells us that comfort comes to us in a different kind of way. First and foremost, God is the source of our comfort in the midst of suffering. But he can also use us to comfort others who are suffering as well. So that when we have experienced loss, when we have experienced those those moments where it seems like God is silent and we have come out the other end of that, God can use us to help support, love, and care for others who are going through the same kinds of things that we have been through. Now, it doesn't always feel like it in the moment or in the midst of it. But God can take what has been broken and use us to be able to support and care for others. To be able to provide comfort to others because He has been the source of our comfort. He has been the source of of us being able to to heal and and to, to get better over time. And sometimes it takes time and sometimes it takes a a really long time before we can get to the place where we're able to be that for others, to get to the place where we've healed enough that we can get to that point. But I think that it's helpful for us to remember that when we find ourselves in the midst of the really hard stuff in life, yeah, we we need to be honest with God. Yes, we need to remember that He is with us. Yes, we need to make sure that that we're doing all the things that we have talked about throughout this sermon series. But we, remain, we need to also be remembered, or that doesn't make sense. We need to be reminded that what we are going through, God can redeem. God can use later to be helpful, to be a source of support for others who are going through the very same things that we are going through. God can redeem our pain and turn it into a means of comfort for others. Jesus, I think, is the greatest example of this. His suffering on the cross in that moment where He cries out, my God, my God, why have You forsaken me? Where He's experiencing this. He's going through all this and and finally he he gives up his last breath and he dies. And then it seems like everything that the disciples had been working towards is, is, is over. It seems like there's no more hope left in the world. But just a few days later, Jesus rises from the dead. He took what was broken and miserable and hopeless and turned it into the greatest story of hope that ever was. He takes the things that we have lost 
that have hurt us, that have shaken our foundations, our world to the core. And he slowly heals them. He turns those wounds into scars. And he takes those scars, and if we allow him to, he turns them into comfort for others. John 20, verses 19 and 20 say this. After the resurrection, on the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Despite Jesus' resurrection and this momentous occasion of hope that comes to us through his resurrection, Jesus still bore the scars of his wounds and his hands and his feet and his side. And the disciples were able to not only see them, but touch them. And in doing so, they found hope again. You see, God took something that was meant for evil. He took something that was as broken as broken could be. And he transformed it into the greatest hope of the world. And Jesus' scars, Jesus' scars bore the pain that he experienced on our behalf. But were also symbols. They were also a sign to the disciples of the hope that was to come. And so too, when we are wounded and God heals us from those wounds, yeah, sure, it might take time. It might take us a really long time to get to that place. But when the wound scars over, people can see those scars in our lives if we allow them to. And they can turn into a source of comfort. For others to know that they're not alone in their suffering. They're not the only ones that have, have gone through the pain of, of whatever experience that they have had. And that means that at a certain point, we have to become vulnerable enough to show our scars like Jesus showed his. And I know that's not always easy because vulnerability is often tough. For us. We don't want people to always know the, the pain we've gone through because sometimes there's embarrassment there. Sometimes it's just scary to open ourselves up to people. Sometimes it can be downright frightening to be vulnerable in that respect. But we don't go through the things that we do by accident. They are a means by which God can work in us and through us so that we might serve and love others. And again, that requires us to become vulnerable and to share those scars and the source of those scars with others who are going through what we have been through. And in the midst of that, When we think about the resurrection, we think about Jesus' scars. It is a reminder that one day, all those no's that have come to us in our prayer life, those moments where God has felt distant or silent, all those moments where we have felt alone, one day, we're going to be met with the fullness of God and His kingdom and His presence. And that is our ultimate hope. All the stuff that we've been talking about over the last four or five weeks, they can help us move and process what we are going through. They can help us move through those things. But our ultimate hope as Christians is in eternity. 
Because I'm going to be honest, there are going to be things that we go through that just are not going to find a solution in this life and in this world. Sometimes there just isn't. Sometimes people get sick and they die. Sometimes we lose people too soon. Sometimes relationships break. And as try as we might, we might not be able to fix those things in the here and now. But our ultimate hope is that one day God will bring redemption. He will fix all of the brokenness in some fashion. And there's a mystery to that. We don't know how he's going to do it and, and bring all those things together. But he promises in, in, in his word that one day, all the tears, they, they go away. He promises us that in the, in, in the fullness of his presence, when his kingdom comes in its fullness, we're going to see the fullness of reconciliation and redemption. The pain goes away. That is our ultimate hope. One day, one day, we will be in the fullness of His presence. And we will be able to see how all of these things that have gone on in our lives, how all of these things that we have endured in our lives will all tie together for, his good, for, for our goodness and for His glory. This is when the questions we have will be answered and the mystery solved. This is when the periods of, of silence that we have experienced in this life will be replaced with the unending presence and glory of God. This is when the, the tears of our pain will be wiped away. And we will be swept up into the redemptive, restorative, and healing presence of our Lord and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Who again, fully understands the pain and the horribleness that can happen in our lives. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, it says this, we do not grieve as those without hope, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again. It's an indicator that grief is assumed. We're going to grieve. We're going to be pained. We're going to be wounded. But we don't grieve without hope in our lives. One day, because Jesus died and rose again, we will be in His presence. And there will be healing. That is our one true hope in the midst of all of the silence and pain. At the end of the day, all I have to point to in the midst of our suffering and our pain, all, of, all that I have to point to when we are experiencing silence or it feels like we have been forsaken or, or left alone by God, all that I have to point to is Jesus Christ. At the end of the day, that's all that any of us really have. As a pastor, I want to be able to say, just do this, this, and this, and you're all good. But that's not how life works. Doing this, this, and this can help. It can help us on the road. It can help us cope. It can help us navigate. But at the end... What I truly have to offer you is Jesus. And I offer that to you this morning. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, whatever circumstances you're facing, good, bad, ugly, I offer you Jesus. And that comes with a promise that one day it's all eventually going to make sense. And that the scars you develop now God will use to help care for others. We don't always know when or how, but that's what God's Word tells us. And so we trust to His promises. Which brings me to our main point this morning. Our main point is this. Jesus can take what is broken in our lives and He can turn it into something beautiful. 
in our life change is this. In the midst of anguish, in God's silence, I invite you to be honest with God and yourself. To remember that you are not alone. To ask yourself whether or not you believe that God is good, wise, and loving. And to live in the tension of the anguish and hope that we all experience through lament. And to allow God to take what is broken in our lives, to redeem it so that we might be of comfort to others. I'd like to close with a short example of this. I've shared with you before that uh, many years back, Jess and I had struggled through some different, or had struggled through some miscarriages. We had lost two different children. And as you might imagine, that was extremely difficult and painful for us. And Jess, in particular, had a really, really hard time sort of snapping back from those experiences. She struggled significantly with those experiences. And it took a really long time before she got to a place where she felt a sense of, of healing. And it doesn't mean that there still aren't some wounds that sort of come from that. But it's taken her a really long time to get through the grief of, of, of those experiences. But she has had opportunities because of those experiences to be able to minister to other women who have gone through what she has gone through. Now, it wasn't something that she could have done or early on in that process, but after there was some healing that took place, she was able to show those scars and vulnerable moments. And she was able to help others who had gone through or were going through what she had gone through and was able to serve them. She was able to be a comfort because God was a source of her comfort. And she was able to ultimately point them to God as their source of comfort as well. I share that with you simply as a way to show that despite the pain we might experience in life, God can use that pain in a redemptive way so that you might be able to serve and care for and comfort others. And with all of that in mind, I'm going to invite you to pray along with me the prayer that we have been praying these last four or five weeks. Again, you can find a copy of this out on the resource table if you would like. Would you pray with me? O oh Christ Jesus, when all is darkness and we feel our weakness and helplessness, give us the sense of your presence, your love and your strength. Help us to have perfect trust in your protecting love and strengthening power so that nothing may frighten or worry us. For living close to you, we shall see your hand your purpose, your will through all things. Amen.